Hello, Home Service Pros, and welcome to the Battle Plan Marketing Podcast, episode number 61. Today, we've got a special guest. We're interviewing Lance Ball, the owner-operator of Aspen Mountain Plumbing in southwest Rock Springs, Wyoming. Lance is a master plumber with over 18 years in the trade. He learned plumbing in Las Vegas, Nevada, but in 2007, he returned back to Wyoming where he was born and raised. He passed his master plumber's license in Wyoming while working for a couple other companies and then started his own company, Aspen Mountain Plumbing, back in 2013. Here we are nearly a decade later, and he owns a highly rated plumbing services company with five trucks servicing two different towns in southwest Wyoming, Rock Springs and Green River, Wyoming, respectively. They're the fastest growing, largest plumbing services company in the entire county of Sweetwater, Wyoming. He's a really smart business owner with uh, great systems in place and had plenty of helpful advice for plumbers and service companies in our interview. He was a lot of fun to speak with and listen to, so I think you'll uh, really enjoy this one and get a lot out of it. Without further delay, let's dive into our talk with Lance Ball of Aspen Mountain Plumbing. Welcome to the Battle Plan Marketing Podcast for Contractors. Get actionable advice and tactics on how to grow your home service company, plus interviews with industry experts dropping value bombs in marketing, sales, and operations. And now, let's power up your home service biz with your host, Mark Ambrose of Battle Plan Marketing. All right. Welcome to the podcast, Lance. Thank you. Appreciate you coming on the show today. All right. Let's dive right in. Tell us what you're doing now, where you do it, who you do it for, and how your company helps them. Well, I'm the owner and founder of Aspen Mountain Plumbing in Rock Springs, Wyoming. We've been in business since 2013. We're a small town of about 45,000 people with adjoining town about 15 miles away, Green River, and we have five operating trucks. Just recently became the largest plumbing service company here in Sweetwater County area. Nice. Congrats. Thank you. I'm sorry, your second town is how far away? It's 15 miles away. It's called Green River, Wyoming. Oh, okay. So it's close. Yeah, they're rivals in high school. You know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Now you take their money and help them with their plumbing. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. I like it. I like it. So do you have core services or you just all service plumbing or do you have a couple of core services you guys prefer to go out? So we do everything service plumbing for regular homes. We don't do any mobile homes. And the reason we do that is they're not our customers. Right. Not trying to be mean, but we just know who our customer is and that's who we focus on. Absolutely. And we probably specialize more so in this area. We're the only ones that do uh, water softeners and filtration systems. Great. And we're the only ones that are factory certified with Navi and water heaters, tankless water heaters. So. Oh, yeah. I'm familiar with the brand, actually. Yeah, they're one of the better brands out there. And Renai kind of bounced back and forth between the best in the nation. But yeah, that's kind of us. We specialize in those. We recently started doing trenchless drain work. Nice. We're doing coating. And next year, we're going to be in the process of purchasing into the new flow system, which does liners. Pulling in liners. Yep, exactly. Pull in liners. And then we should be pretty much wrapping everything on that circuit. Nobody else is doing it. So trying to stay ahead of the game. That's big business. We have some clients and we were talking how in the real estate industry, they're missing out and the realtors are actually a little negligent in their duties, so to speak. I don't want to be harsh on them, but not bringing in a plumbing inspection during the real estate purchase process, not just a regular home inspection, but having that sewer line, most importantly, check. Absolutely. It's not good stuff. No, we see that a lot in our industry, Mark, is we will have a call from a homeowner just bought the house Mm. and they've already got sewer issues. Oh man. And no inspector is usually carrying a sewer camera with them. 90% of them just basic look at the pipe inside the house and that's it. That's it. So much hidden danger there. And high ticket danger that insurance does not cover danger. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So you couldn't ask for a worse recipe, I don't think. Yep. You have hard water then up there, Lance? We have extremely hard water here, Mark. We average between, and your listening audience that's familiar with water softening, water hardness testing, they'll know that it's measured by grains. And we've got between eight and 12 grains is our normal water. Wow. And that's city water. That's not well water. Wow. That's city water. So when we start getting into the wells, I've seen upwards of 120 grains. 
Wow. So when you get that, you start having to contact the softening companies and actually have them pre-built for you. Yeah. So do you do a lot of messaging like that hard water is destroying all of their appliances? Yeah, that's a huge part of our marketing is we really speak to the address of what it does to your system as a whole. And not just the fixtures, but the water pipes themselves, your meter that the city's providing, all of that is being affected by it. So I didn't even think about the main meter, but certainly your water heater, your dishwasher, any appliances that water is going through, it's slowly eating away the lifespan of them. Yeah. So that's a great business, nice margins. And when you're done, they have beautiful drinking water. Do you give them an RO at the sink also or? Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll test the water and see where their drainage is at. If they're eight and below, we'll usually offer them what we call a Halo 5 system. I don't know if you've heard of those. They're out of California. It's basically a scale management system with four filters built into it. And that actually will provide the better drinking water. If we are over eight, then obviously we're going to make the offer of a water softener with an RO system. Gotcha. At first, if it's low, it's a multifaceted approach or it's softening and filtering for them. Yeah. And our system is we give three options to every customer, good, better, best, no matter what. There you go. And so if we're in that lower option, then they could do a scale management. They could do a carbon filter. They could do the Halo 5, which is all of it. If they're in that higher bracket, then we'll give them options on softening systems. There's softeners out there that have a whole home filter built into it. You could do that with an RO system. It's a little bit more, but that's your better option. Nice. And for the plumbers out there who are not into water filtration, would you suggest they take a look at that or what? They're really missing out. They are. I don't know where and when plumbers at some point decided, Mark, that filtration had nothing to do with plumbing, which is completely the opposite. It has everything to do with plumbing. But so many plumbers miss that opportunity. They don't take the coal or go to Colligan or go to this company that does softeners. But there's a huge, huge opportunity to take with that filtration and softening. Totally agree. And helping the client further, helping the homeowner further, especially in everything that's related, like that water heater is a very big thing, right? With the hard water. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's a way to expand your services, expand your margins, hold on to customers. I'm sure there's a giant loyalty leap when you leave the house after water softening and filtrations in place. They love you a lot more than if you just fix their leaky pipe or something, I'm going to guess. Yeah, I was seeing the difference. I mean, you got a glass shower door and then you go and use it. And the next time you clean it, you don't have to wipe the spots off the next time. People will notice that. Or when they're pulling their dishes out of the dishwasher, they're noticing that there's no spots on their glasses. It's almost an instant satisfaction. And you could test the system in front of the customer. And we use Hawk Hawk test kits, H-A-C-H test kits with the drip system. So the color changes right before their eye. So you're showing them that this is not just a us guessing. This is an accurate test telling you how hard it is. And then after they see it, the results of it, they're getting this full spectrum of the service. So yeah, a loyalty is built on it big time. You can offer maintenance systems with it to where you're coming in and regularly testing it and make sure it's still working. Obviously, water's never consistent. It changes all the time. We especially see it in well systems where you have a spring runoff and you have super amount of minerals in it. And then all of a sudden in the fall, they don't have any of those minerals left. It dries up. It dries up. So it's an opportunity to get back in the house every year. Yes. And if you set up a maintenance program where you come in and you check their salt, you check their hardness drainage and just make sure that it's staying on top of it, it's an opportunity for you to get back in that house and make more sales down the road. I love that. I love that. So you've created an annual service agreement, charge a monthly or once a year and we'll come in once a year and do the following procedures for you. Yeah, we call it our gold leaf plan. Our logo is a gold leaf. It's the Aspen leaf. I like it. And thank you. So we call it our gold leaf membership plan. And for $16.99 a month, just take a credit card. We charge it to them. We give them one inspection a year. We check their softeners. We check their filters. We do an overall hardness test on the valves to make sure that they're actually staying worked and able to move. So, and then we give them front of line privileges. There's a lot of things that can go into it. Yeah, a VIP club of sorts. Exactly. And they're sort of paying you to stay connected to them, which is really beautiful. So if some other plumbing problem comes up, they're calling Aspen Mountain. They're paying you to be committed. Yeah. And you have revenue. Yeah, they're paying you to be committed. 
you're providing a great service in return. And yes, you just pointed out another beautiful thing. When you accumulate enough of these people, you've got a nice, dependable baseline little revenue there, especially in, you know, maybe seasonal swings in the business and stuff. 500 bucks every month that really all you're doing is one job a year on. Yeah. It's a no brainer. And X percent of those jobs work into other jobs. Yeah, exactly. Do you do like a plumbing inspection annual also? Like, is that part of? Yeah. Beautiful. That's part of the program. We do a, for a regular tank water heater, we'll do an annual flush, wash it out for them. We'll check their gas valve while we're there, check the valves on it, check their dielectric unions, make sure they're not plugged up. But yeah, I mean, we do a whole home inspection basically once a year for them. And how do you remember when the customer's time for their inspection? Good question. Well, I have a system that we use Service Titan as our dispatching system, and it has a system built into it to where it'll actually redo those reoccurring jobs for you, remind you. That's beautiful. That was going to be one of my future questions, so I'm <laughs> glad you brought that up. So important. We see so many service companies that don't use a solid customer relationship management software, a CRM. Yeah. So can you speak to that a little? Like on a scale of one to 10, 10 being really help my company. How would you rate Service Titan or any CRM as part of your business? Any CRM is vital. I mean, you don't want to have a pen and paper in today's world. No. Everything's turned into new technology. Yep. I would say that it's a 10 for me, 100% 10. We started out with just a small one called Joyce. It was just an invoicing program. And then we went to another one called Skyboss, which was a dispatching program with the invoicing. And then we ended up with Service Type. It's the better platform on the market, if you ask me. I agree. It's got so much built into it. I mean, you can integrate your phones. Everything's built right in there. The person calls if they're a returning customer, their information's right there. Your dispatcher has it. She clicks on it. She schedules it. Everything's built into it. The price book's in there. So the guys are pulling it up. They're doing their invoicing straight from that software. That's big right there. Yes. And from a business point of view, I can go to one spot and check it all. Exactly. Integrates with your accounting, your email marketing system. It goes right into it. Text messages to the customers. There's a great software program out there called Patch Speed to Lead, I believe. Okay. Which also integrates. So take a look at that. I have no association with them at all. But so you get a lead, let's say from your website, it automatically spits out a text, email and voicemail message to them yeah. saying our team will be right in touch with you. So I don't know if you use like Home Advisor or Angie's or one of those to buy, get leads at all or. We don't hear 90% of our leads come from either the internet or some type of advertisement like radio or something like that. They hear it. And we try to flood our market with brand awareness. We represent our local high school sports. We do our rodeos. We do Wyoming's huge for rodeos. So that's a big thing. That's like football here for a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. And so we sponsor a lot of the local sports events. We do a lot of radio advertising. Our Google, I mean, that's how you found me, Mark, was off Google. Yep. Exactly. That's a big leader for us. And I stay on top of all that stuff. We're changing it, our website regularly. So Google's recognizing that you're constantly active on it. Right. Exactly. That's a big deal. So trying to get your brand awareness out there is huge. And these software platforms can go into helping that. Like I was saying with Type, as soon as we get the job and my guy dispatches to that job, they get a text message and they can follow it on their phone where he's at. And that's all part of that software, but that makes that brand look bigger than it actually is. Yeah, well, it shows the consumer you're efficient, you're on top of things, you know, and now they have more confidence in doing business with you instead of the sketchy, I don't know when I can get there kind of thing. Yeah. They can see, they can watch the truck yeah. on its way to them if they want. And it keeps your guys more honest, too, because instead of stopping at the gas station before they dispatch or dispatching and then going to the gas station and getting a smoke or whatever, they know that as soon as they hit that dispatch button, the customer's watching them. So they have to be in progress to that home. So it keeps them honest. You're having a coffee and lounging at the park and stuff. Yes. Exactly. I'm glad you brought up those other things too. So I did see your website's really well done. We brought you in because you have, I don't know, almost a couple hundred reviews, if I remember off the top of my head, on Google, yeah. which is the most important place to get reviews. It's where nine out of 10 people are searching. So we need other service companies that might look at Yelp or Home Advisor, and all important places that have reviews, but nine out of 10 are doing it on Google. So you did an awesome job of doing that. 
Thank you. I also saw that you're using your Google Maps listing. I remember seeing posts and pictures and you're replying to reviews. Every review, that's important. It really is. Yeah. I tell business owners, like if somebody walked up to you in person and said, hey, Lance, man, your team did an awesome job at my house the other day. Can't thank you enough. You stopped the leak, whatever. And if you just like turned around and didn't say anything to me or walked away, that would be like incredibly rude. Yeah. Yeah. But we do that as business owners. Well, you and I don't, but many business owners do that with reviews. They just never reply. That person took 10 minutes out of their time to log in and make a review. Yeah. I think a lot of business owners, they forget that that is form of your communication. And trying to keep your customer loyal to you is communicating with your customer. And so you're reaching out to that customer, but you're also reaching out to those other nine people you said, what is it, nine out of 10 people search Google? Nine out of 10, that's right. You're also reaching out to them and telling them that this guy cares enough about this one customer to reach back to him. Exactly, yeah. It's a small thing, and yet it's very, very powerful. It is. So like you say, there's two audiences. You're talking to the customer who took the time to review, and you're talking to the endless stream of prospects who see that you're communicating. And now, of course, Google uses the words in the reviews and your replies to match up with search phrases. So now for business owners out there, really important to try and get your customers to write what service they use yep. when they write a review. Thank you for the water heater repair. So now when somebody does water heater repair, Rock Springs, boom, you know, there's 10 of your reviews with water heater repair in there. And if your replies as well. So very powerful little tidbits there. Keywords are huge on the internet market. They really are. And and you can get them in so many different ways. Like if you do an advertisement on a radio station, they've got a website, have them link it to your website. I had a call from Cheyenne. It's the opposite side of the state we're in. And all they did is type in plumbers in Wyoming. Wow. And here we are in Small Rock Springs. We're the fifth largest city. (laughs) Yeah. And here they're in the biggest city and we're getting pulled up on the reviews because we have all these backlinks to different places. Nice. Glad you brought that up too. I was going to touch on that because you touched on sponsoring Mm -hmm. ball teams and high school teams and things like that, maybe some local nonprofits. These are great for a lot of reasons. Of course, helping the kids out, helping nonprofits out, but also uh, branding, as you said, getting your name out there, but then very valuable. A lot of business owners don't understand that those links, so a lot of those places will have websites. They thank you for your sponsorship. They link back to your website. And those links, because they're local, are absolutely priceless. Yeah. They're worth paying. So everybody should join their local chamber of commerce for the same reason. Absolutely. And get that link. And then, yeah, whatever sponsorships turn you on locally, fit your philosophy, your mold, whatever, your fun, jump on that. Those links are incredibly valuable. And as you just pointed out, you're ranking hundreds of miles away. Yeah. Or somebody's just searching the whole state and you're coming up. Yeah. So, and that's the value of, so local links. And then if you have industry links, being in directories, like maybe the Plumbers Association of Wyoming. So state associations, any, you can Google plumbing plus the word directory. And you put those in parentheses and find plumbing directories and get in those. Most of them are free. And those now you have links from industry related sources and local sources. And man, that'll really power up your site. It's like going to the gym and then drinking your protein shake. That protein shake is just exactly that. It's backlinking, putting yourself out there in different places, the plumbing industry, whatever it is that you're involved in, putting your name into it, and then sponsoring local stuff that's building you up. That's you lifting the weights and drinking the protein shake. Yeah, that's a great analogy. You're powering up. Yep. You're building the muscles. You're doing the job. Now you got to get the internet world. We're living in a digital world, Yeah. whether we like it or not, depending on your age. I'm an old guy. I love it. I think it's a fantastic opportunity for everybody now. You can compete with the quote unquote big guys if they're in your neighborhood. You can just be bigger, better and stronger than them on the Internet. Local companies have an advantage over the big guys on a local level. You can compete today. You hit it right there, Mark. When we started business eight years ago, there's a company in town that's been around for 65 years. They're on their third generation of owners. And we've beat them as the big guy because of using our marketing and using our internet and the stuff that they're not doing. 
we got the trucks with the full wraps. We've got the shop that's in the busiest street in town with the big wrap on the window. You know what I mean? Nice. It's all about giving that look that you're big. Nice. And then creating that big market by using that internet source, like you were saying. Exactly. Honestly, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, in my early days, man, it would be really tough to compete with that guy. Yeah, yeah. He would be burying you. He's in the phone book. He's got the full page in the phone book. He's tough to compete with, but not anymore. Yeah, yeah. It levels the ground. It levels. And you don't have to be rich to do it. You just be smart. So those things that you're doing are really smart. Didn't cost you a fortune, I'm sure, to sponsor the local ball team and those kinds of things. Doesn't cost you anything to, well, very little to make posts on Google My Business, put photos in there, reply to reviews. So these are all great things. Yep, simple stuff. Awesome. Very impressive. You're all over it. I'd love to see it. Thank you. Congrats. That's why you're expanding. That's why you got 200 plus five star reviews. So that is the backbone of it all, of course, doing great work with a smile and cleaning up afterwards. That's job number one. Yeah, I mean, it starts at the very beginning. I mean, your image on the internet's number one, right? That's what attracts people. And then answering the phone. That's a huge one in our area. 90% of the companies didn't answer the phone. Getting on that phone and giving them customer service from the very beginning, you win that customer on that phone call. And so having that team set up in the office to answer the phone and dispatch properly. And obviously that software is going to help them, right? Because they know that this is a repeat customer because it pops up on my service site. Hey, this is a repeat customer. Hey, thanks for calling us, Mr. Jones, for this again. We appreciate your business. And already you got that relationship and that loyalty to that customer. You're remembering them with 500 customers in a database. You're remembering that one customer. Yeah, they love that. And that means a lot to them, right? Yeah. And then you're providing that clean service. You pull up in a nice clean truck. You got a nice clean organized system. Everything's nice and clean on the iPad. So when you present the options, it's right there in front of them. Nice clean pictures, videos, whatever it is. Yeah. It's all clean from start to finish. And then at the very end, the guys go, hey, you know what? If you really appreciate our service today, leave us a five-star review. Yeah. And it's easily done at that point. You've impressed them from point A to point B. It's easily done. And there's ways of doing it. Like I give my guys a $25 gift certificate to Home Depot if they get a five-star review with their name mentioned in it. Nice. That's great. So what am I pushing for? Well, I'm pushing for reviews, number one. But number two, personalized reviews. Because now the customer's getting that guy that they read about in the review. And now they're feeling special because they got Tanner, who was mentioned six times, or Chris or whoever it was that was out there in the field, they're now getting that guy that they read about. Yeah, they love that. They're already excited. They don't even know the guy yet, but I'm getting Chris. He's on the way. Yeah. I saw three reviews. Everybody loves Chris. Yeah. Five-star reviews of Chris. Yeah. Exactly. That's awesome. So how long have you been in the plumbing trade, would you say, Lance? So I've been in plumbing trade for 18 years. I started in 2000 and. This is the last part of 2002, first part of 2003. I actually went through an Excel program and got my journeyman's license pretty fast. And then after that, I went to the next level as master. I had my own business in Vegas for about two or three years. And then I went through a divorce. And that's what drove me back home to Wyoming. That's where I'm originally from. And I worked for some plumbing companies here. And I just seen that these guys don't know how to service the customer. They don't know how to treat that customer with respect. It was a broke fix mentality up here. Yeah. It's everywhere. It is. What I mean by that, though, is for the listeners that aren't plumbers or whatever, I'm sure you got multiple trades involved. But for them that don't know what a broke fix mentality is, is you go in, you fix the problem, you walk out. Instead of going in and saying, well, there's several different options to taking care of this problem. We can fix the problem. We can replace the problem or we can upgrade you and give you something better that's going to last you a lot longer. And then you don't see me for another 10 years. Right. Right. Who doesn't want that? (laughs) Exactly. And so that's the broke fix mentality is coming in, just fixing it, not giving them any options or choices. You're basically hurting yourself in the long run by doing that because there's so much more opportunity in that home that you're passing up. Agreed. But you're also not allowing the customer to have a say in their own home. Yeah, exactly. And that's huge when it comes to sales. Now, my guys don't sell. My guys don't sell. And I don't believe in sales coaching. My coaching is is if you have the mentality of you're going to help this person, then why wouldn't you want to offer them the best stuff for their house? Absolutely. That's the only training necessary. How do we serve this customer the best way that fits their desires and needs? Yep. And a good, better, best. So that was a beautiful statement. Broken fix mentality, right? So a lot of tradespeople are incredibly great 
at their trade. And then they go out, I'm going to do this on my own. I'm going to open up my own business, right? Because I'm great at this. Yeah. What they don't realize maybe, or not enough, is that you're no longer in the plumbing business, really. You are now in the customer business yep. and the marketing business, really. Yep. Before you're in the plumbing business, you're already great at plumbing and that's great. But now it's about serving the customer, just like you said. So if you go there and you're friendly, you're clean and you're all about them, the business will flow to you anyway. Yep. And those who are on a tight budget, they're going to pick the good. And the ones who got a little more, they might pick the better. And the ones who are all in, they're going to pick the best. But they're always going to pick what's right for them as long as you're educating them well, good enough. That's key is education. Yeah, that's the key. So your own team needs to know everything they can about everything and then be able to share it intelligently. And I agree, no sales trick, customer training. Yep. Yeah. Take care of that customer. Offer them everything that you can. I have a guy that he's fantastic at service. He sells like a champ. And the reason is, is he'll go in and if he sees Mrs. Jones out in the car, groceries brought in, he'll go out and help her carry those groceries in. Mr. Jones sees that and he's like, this guy, he doesn't care about the plumbing as much as he cares about us. Right. And there's his sale right there. Yeah, exactly. Or cleaning up afterwards. Like you wouldn't leave that your own home like that, right? So treat everybody like you would treat your mom or your dad and your own home and your business will flourish. Doing the cleanup before you even do the work. So like putting booties on, right? Putting booties on, putting plastic down, putting something down to protect your stuff, making sure you're not putting your tools on their nice granite countertop. Put it on a pad on the floor. You know what I'm saying? It's the little things like that that people pick up on. Yeah, great topic. I'm glad you brought all that up. That was beautiful. Speaking of talent, is how hard is it? It's kind of hard nationwide now. So are you having difficulties finding great talent? You know, I've always had difficulties finding talent in Wyoming. Most people around here, there's no licensing requirement statewide. They leave it up to the municipalities to enforce it. And some of these municipalities, the ones we're in, in particular, like Rock Springs, Green River, their requirements are not there. Any Joe Blow that picks up a pipe wrench can basically be a plumber. I see. So you don't know who's really skilled or not. Yeah. I mean, I get applications. They say, oh, yeah, I've got six years of plumbing experience. Well, okay, what plumbing experience do you have? And a lot of guys are oil filled right around here. So, well, I've worked with pipe and I've worked with pipe wrenches. (laughs) That's plumbing. No, no, it's not. There is a difference. So finding good help is a challenge for everybody, for everybody, for everybody. I've actually found that bringing guys fresh off the street, that's got a little bit of mechanical experience. They know their tools. They know basics that are humble enough to be taught is the best employee I can get for myself because then I can bring him in. I can teach him our system. I can teach him the right way to do plumbing. And then I can send him out to the home to take care of the customer the right way. That's huge for us, but that takes a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of systems. I agree. So I'm finding that myself, that it's easier for me if I hire somebody who is uh, whatever, has SEO experience, a search engine optimist. Well, they have a different view of what SEO is all about. And now I have to sort of retrain them out of their current thinking. So that's even a little more difficult than like you say, give me somebody who's all in and learnable, teachable, and motivated. And then you're also right. So now you have to have checklists. You have to have your SOP, your standard procedures in place. But that's how you succeed and scale. So you have to work yourself to getting those systems. So at what point did you start developing your SOPs and stuff? So I really started, I kind of started in the beginning, which is me in the truck. Good for you. And the reason I did that is I knew... And maybe it was my experience of having a business in the past, right? I kind of knew all the stuff that I needed to have in square place in order to get me to where I wanted to be. I started there, just we started with technology. It was an iPad, right? Invoicing on the iPad, basic stuff. But I had steps that I took on each thing, like how I started the morning, how I worked in during the day with my customers and how I did things. And I started it from that get-go. And then the next guy I brought on was in the truck with me for the first month. And he saw how I did it, right? And he started seeing that this is the system. And I created the culture basically from the get-go. And I think that's what we have to call it, Mark, is a culture. It's what you're developing, right? Is a culture. And it's a right system doing it, the SOPs, but you have to do it one step at a time. You can't just go gung-ho on it. And so building that price book, 
First of all, knowing what you need to charge. That's number one right there. Yes. That's priority. And you can't just pull a number out of your butt and it worked, right? Let's be honest. And don't call the competitors. Yeah. And base your prices on them. No. Your price has got to be your price and you got to know that that's your honest price to give to the customer. And that's based on what you have as overhead. That That's based on what you have as far as needs. I like to think of it as you want to build it as where you want to be in 10 years, not today. So price it based on where you want to grow to. Is a $100 paycheck from that customer going to get you a $100,000 truck? Absolutely not. But maybe a three or $400 paycheck from that customer will get you that $100,000 truck down the road, right? So you really need to sit down and do the figures, figure out what your overhead is, what you have to break even with, and then what I need to charge in order to make a percentage to grow. And then on top of the growth, what I want to make as far as revenue and to continue my building my bank. Because let's be honest, good equipment, good trucks, good systems, they're not cheap. It takes money and you have to pay for that. And who's going to buy that for you? Your customer. Right, exactly. Yeah, you have to price in your salary. All your benefits, all your fixed costs, your building, your warehouse, your trucks, your insurance, you know, all this stuff. Licensing, everything. Your licensing, your profit. So a lot of guys just figure like this is the cost to roll a truck, but they're not really uh, putting in all those costs. So yeah, there's a book, How Much Should I Charge? Ellen Rohr, I believe, Mm -hmm. ran a $40 million plumbing franchise. And you should sit down, not you. But, you know, our (laughs) listeners, our listeners should sit down with their bookkeepers or accountant and figure out that cost. And if you're not willing to do that, I had a CPA on the podcast a while back and she said, well, if you're not willing to do that, then just double your prices and you could lose 40 percent of your business. You'll still be ahead. And you're probably pricing wrong right now. The best advice I could give to somebody starting out brand new is get a business coach, because like you said at the beginning, you're a plumber right? You're an electrician, you're an HVAC guy, you're not a businessman. And you've never been taught how to do the business, right? We haven't gone to school. Most of us, we went to trade school, we didn't go to college for business, right? And it's a different ball game altogether. Any business owner will tell you straight up that business is not plumbing. Yeah, it is not a trade. And you can learn how to be that person. And you can have a coach. And so get a business coach. Don't be prideful. Know that I'm still learning, Mark. I mean, I've been in business eight years. I'm still learning things. And I'll continue to learn things because that's how a good businessman is, is he continues to learn and grow. And so don't be prideful and say, well, I know how to do the plumbing. I know it's this much for a truck. Get a business coach. Say, hey, I'm not sure how to run my business. Can you teach me how to develop my marketing strategy? Right. Help me develop my strategy for growth. How do I figure out my hours? Talk to an accountant. Hey, what do I need to know about my taxes? If you don't know about your taxes, that first year is going to kick your butt. Oh, it's going to kill you. Yeah. Because you don't know how to put away for it, right? Or you don't know how to pay into it. And so that's a very, very crucial step. I wish years ago I would have brought on a business coach and had them teach me these things. Because once I learned all these things, once I got that business coach and I learned all those things, my knowledge went. Yeah, exactly. Like one year with a business coach on a monthly retainer or whatever. And yeah, you'll come at it there. That's like going to trade school for business now. Yep. So you already know your trade and you've jumped off the cliff, right? I think it's the LinkedIn guy, uh, the CEO. He said something like entrepreneurship, starting a business, like jumping off a cliff and building an airplane on the way down. (laughs) So we're just going to deal with it as we're going. And that's cool. Nothing wrong with that. That's balls to the wall. I love it. But as you say, go higher where you don't know. There's always more to learn. So that's great advice. And not every coach is going to have all the answers. I mean, you could have multiple coaches. I would recommend finding a coach that's based in your trade because they know your trade 100% already. So explaining you the business, they'll be able to explain it in terms that you understand. Totally agree. Even like a service titan consultant who works with plumbers or solar or whatever you're in, that too, because that is such an important part, that CRM of your business, that you really, you got to get that dialed in. And your CS... You need to know it. Yeah, your CSR has got to get that dialed in too. You got to get that booking rate going. You got every part of it. And it's not a big, I mean, it's not a small undertaking, right? Your price book is a nightmare all by itself. Oh, yeah. Learning new software is always a nightmare. Yep. But if you really want to, on the other end, is a simpler, more efficient, 
business and a happier you. Would you not agree? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a podcast out there that his name's Rory. I can't remember what his last name is, but he talked about the concept of thinking as a business person and thinking ahead and creating more time for yourself, right? And let's be honest, everybody gets into business for themselves to have more time for themselves, right? And to make more money. Obviously, we've got to make money. That's what we're in the business for to begin with. Yeah, we take the risk, yeah. Right, and that's why we take the risk. But he says that you got to change your mentality and look at uh, ways to creating more time, right? So building that price book, honestly, our price and building that price book based on it, that is going to take you hours. And no question about it, it's going to take you hours. Yes. But in the long run, my guy's not calling me in the field asking me how much this is. Exactly. So when he's out in the field, he's now saving you time. Yes. And you can actually multiply that. So you can add five, six, seven, eight employees to it, give them the same price book, and you've got yourself in the field. Yeah, obviously, they're not going to be you, but you got yourself in the field as far as your price book goes. And that takes time. It takes time to build it. It takes time to build it. And you got to work with your accounting team there too, because you got to get that price right, right? That's the foundation of your building, so to speak. If you build that foundation poorly, your building is coming down, man. Yep. You're on shaky ground. So the pricing is absolutely everything. And the systems. You have all the opportunity to grow, but if you don't put the time in, you're not going to grow. Exactly. And if your prices are wrong, so you can spend all you want yep. on advertising and marketing. I don't care if you put a million dollars a month into that. If your pricing is wrong, if you're not putting a dollar in and getting at least two dollars out. You're in big trouble. Don't trust the guy down the street because his price never is not yours. No, it's got to be your price. And those guys that call around and I mean, all of us that start a business probably started that way at some point. We call around, what are you charging? What are you charging? And then you meet in the middle, so you're not the lowest, but you're not the highest. That's wrong. Totally wrong. That's the wrong mentality because you're not building yourself. You're not building your business. The mentality is, I need to charge what I need to charge. I don't give a crap what my competitor's charging. His overhead is going to be completely different. He might be chucking a truck running everything out of a storage unit. You know what I mean? And I'm going to be running everything out of a professional shop with a professional lot of fleet. Exactly. That's how you got to think. And it's a mentality change. It is. Mark, it really is. You got to change your mind and go from, well, I could do this just like this guy. Well, yeah, you can, but your business isn't his. It's yours. And you need to make it based on what your business is going to be spending. Or you want to spend a million in advertising? You got to be able to make that million to spend it. And you got to do that with making sure your pricing's right. 100%. It's the most important thing. I'm glad we harped on it kind of hard here because it is the most important thing. And we want everybody out there to succeed. And so, yeah. And if you could learn your trade, do you think back to your first days of your trade? Everything was weird. The names of the parts were weird. The names of the tools were weird. Everything was a little scary or a little anxious or whatever is whenever we're learning something new. So just look at it the same way. Yep. And outsource, right? You should have a great accountant, CPA, a great bookkeeper. Those people should be helping you drastically. And like you said, bring in a business coach, bring in a service titan consultant, get those systems together, get your SOPs going, let your employees help you with your SOPs. Like, yeah. Can we make this a better process? That's how I do it currently, Lance. But if you can make it better, I'm all in, man. And there's a reward on the other side for you. Hey, you know what? I do my pricing for my employees different. They're paid different than most people do. I do a tier system. Okay. Now in my price book, everything's built on a certain time for that task. And so basically, instead of doing commission, which give that guy a percentage of that fee, you're just pushing for sales. You're not pushing for the service. Yeah. It's a little dangerous. Yes. It's a little dangerous. And so in mine, I want to reward the guy for putting in more effort. But at the same time, I want Mrs. Jones to be taken care of. Yet I want to be able to make a profit as a business. So how do you make all three of those equal? That's the never ending question for a business owner. How do I make all three of these equal? I want good service for my customer. I want my employees to be happy so they stay here. And I want to be able to make a profit so we can grow. If I do what they call piece rates, so basically my guys sell the task hours. Mrs. Jones pays for those hours. The guys are making their paycheck based on what they sell on those hours. So I do it like, here's V rate. This is your value rate. If you sell up to this amount of hours and what that is, is my break even for my truck. Okay. That's my bottom rate. This is my break even hours. I figured out how many hours it takes in a day to pay for my truck and everything on it and my guy. So that's my break even. So that's my start. You sell this many hours, you get this much on your paycheck. 
and you get 40 hours no matter what. And then you do this and you get this. Now there's going to be slow times where those guys don't have work coming in and they're sitting doing nothing. They're getting paid 40 hours, but I made up for those times that we were slammed and they put in extra hours at work to make more money. It all equals out in the long run. So the business is happy because it's making profit. Customers happy because they're getting the full hours in their home. And then the employees happy because they're actually contributing towards their paycheck. I like it. So the good, better, best plays into that for you also? Yeah, it does. Obviously, the best is going to give them more hours. So they're trying to get Mrs. Jones to take the better option for their home, which we want Mrs. Jones to have the best in her home. So why wouldn't we want her to have the best option? And then with that help mentality, that's where that's at. The best for her. The good, better, best is based on those hours. This is the small amount of hours, whereas the best is the higher amount of hours sold. And that's how we do it. That came from guys telling me, hey, I want to make more on my paycheck. How can we do that? And so I started looking at different ways and talking to different businesses. How do you do your commission? How do you do that came from an employee? So you're saying, ask your employees to help you build your systems. That's a system we have in play. All came from employees bringing feedback back. Well, that's the mark of a great business owner there too, Lance. So another good message for our listeners is, is listen. Yeah. So you did ask and an employee answered and you didn't just shrug it off like, oh, geez, you know, you want more money. You went, maybe there's a way. Yeah. We can both win at this game. Yeah. And you went on a discovery journey yeah. to find out how do I take care of all three people again in a better way for all three. And that's just part of business. You, I mean, if you're not evolving, you're dying. Yeah, exactly. You look at the most successful businesses out there, Walmart. Walmart's changing their strategies all the freaking time. All the time, yeah. Five years ago, they had rollback prices. And now they've got something totally different. But what they're doing is they're evolving their strategy. Yeah. Now, I just heard on the radio that Walmart's going to be putting tons of money in their employees' education. Well, why? They want to excel their level of their employees. So that money is going to come back to them because they're going to excel the level and the thought process of their employees. Yeah, exactly. They're evolving. And that's what great businesses do. Better skills. They do. They do. You got to look constantly be looking for ways to get better in every facet of your business. Yep. Scale the heck out of it. Yep. So we've touched on a few things there. What would you say your favorite part of being a business owner is? My favorite part is being able to just help out my community. That's the reason we become the largest growing company in Southwest Wyoming is because we focus on our community. We're taking care of that customer. And at the end of the day, I mean, that's why I went into plumbing is that I was helping the customer. I was helping that homeowner solve a problem that they couldn't help. And at the end of the day, that's my favorite part of being a business owner is seeing how much we're helping the community. The more trucks I get, the more people I can help in this community. The companies we see with the best ratings and reviews, and you're one of them, that's always their response. I'm in it for my people, for my employees, my community, my customer. Yeah. I mean, you're providing jobs for the employees. So you're giving back to the community that way, right? Yep. And then you're also providing a service that nobody can match. So you're giving back to the community that way. So to me, that's where my heart was initially was I want to give my customer the best service. And that's been my heart through the whole process is I want to give my customer the best service. I want to give my employees the best paycheck. And I want my business to be the best because that's going to provide again for my community. Yeah. But yeah, without a doubt. Even look, like you said earlier, you were looking at adding new services. Like, how do I further help my community? There's nobody in town who's doing cured in place sewer liners. Let's learn that. That's a big job. That saves people a ton of money, especially if they got a lot of hardscape and stuff in their yard. We don't have to trash all this. We can go under it. Always looking for a way to serve that customer better. How can we provide a better quality service for this individual? Yeah, yep. that's beautiful. You already said you wish you had the training. You had hired a business manager in the beginning. Anything else like in when you first started out that you know today that you wish you knew and executed sooner? Don't focus on the money. I think at the very beginning, I got in the service for the right reason, right? I got in the service to help the customer. And then I started thinking about the money. Right. And I started focusing on the money. If you're focusing on the service, the money's going to come. Yep. If you're focusing on how I can take care of my customer, that money's going to come. A lot of times, I think business owners get so wrapped up in the money that they don't look at what we can bless other people's lives with. Take that money and put it back in your business, put it back into your equipment, put it back into your employees, put it back into training, put it back into our community help, Cowboys Against Cancer or something like that. Right. Put it back into that because what's, what's that going to do? 
it's going to promote you as a business that you care about your business, right? But number two, it's going to bring more money. Yeah, totally. So don't focus on the money, focus on the service. Yeah. And it's hard in the beginning. So we'll acknowledge that most people are starting their business on a shoestring. They don't have a giant trust fund or something. Got $500 in my pocket and I got to make it last. They have jumped off the cliff, man, with very little in the pocket. So we get it. We've all been there one step above homeless. That's what I call it. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. But that is the answer. So as long as you know you're in the customer business, you're already great at your trade. Otherwise, you wouldn't have jumped off the cliff. So just take care of that customer and give them that good, better, best. So earlier, I forgot what you called the broke and fix. The broke fix, yeah. Don't be a broke fix guy or girl. Be a customer person. Good, better, best. Always good, better, best. Because you'll be shocked, you know, and don't judge. That's a huge one. The homeowner by any outward appearances. You have no idea who they are. You don't know where they're going to put their money. I mean, I see it every day. These guys that live in a trailer house and they have like an $80,000 truck sitting outside. Their priority is not in the house. Their priority is in their truck, right? So we don't know. We might step up to a house that looks like crap on the outside. But on the inside, they want everything as the best. You bet. You just don't know. But yeah, don't judge that cover. (laughs) Yeah. And that's where good, better, best lets you off the hook there. You just you're appealing to whoever they might be. Yeah. And you don't know who they are. And if there's a complaint down the road, it's really easy to resolve. Well, ma'am, you picked the lowest option here. Right. Yeah. Well, that was why we gave you the other options is there was better options to fix your problem. Now we'll still come back out and we'll still take care of you. But You got to realize that that was your option. So you're going to have to pay again for this service because we did give you the options and you turned it down. It's hard to argue with their decision, right? Exactly. You wanted us to replace some parts instead of the unit. And now the unit's failing again. So Yeah. And we warned you ahead of time. Right. In a polite way. So now you might need to look at the better or the best option. Here's a good, better, best again. Let's choose wisely. Sometime buying the cheapest thing at Walmart is the most expensive thing. Right. Because you got to buy 20 of them over the next three years when you could have spent five times as much on the one that's going to last 12 years or something. And saying that, Mark, you can do things like, and I tell my guys this all the time, if they've got one toilet in their house that's having issues, there's a good chance the other three toilets they have in their house is the same age, going to have issues. Hey, you know what? While I'm here, let me check those toilets, see what age they are, and maybe I can give you a discount on doing multiple toilets. Right. Now you just created the best package for the customer and off of what? One call. Yeah. Let's prevent leaks. Do you get into leak detection and water damage and stuff like that? Lance? Yeah, we're the only ones that have the leak detection here. We have the sound machines. We do a lot of it with businesses mostly. Most of our houses here in Wyoming are basement houses. So everything runs into the foundation and it's in the basement. So I see. It's easier to fix here. So Cal, we have very few basements, so it's all slabs, Yeah, plumbing in the slab, lots of slab leaks, becomes an insurance thing if you have continuous floors, tile or wood. Yeah. Now you do want, as a plumber, you want the insurance company involved because they will more than likely pay for you to reroute the plumbing Yep. rather than what they call breach and access, just tearing up their floor. Or trenching like they do in Texas. They do a lot of trenching underneath. Crazy. I wouldn't do that, but they do. They build trenches with the plumbing and do it underneath in Texas. On a slab foundation, you mean? On a slab foundation, yeah. They'll come in and they'll trench underneath the slab and do all the repairs underneath the slab. I wouldn't do that. I'm from coal mining family, but I'm not a coal miner. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I wouldn't trust that, but. That's wild. Instead of rerouting up and over kind of thing. Well, and, and in our climate, Mark, I mean, we're a high freeze climate. When I was in Nevada, I didn't face that as much. We were like you, we, most houses were slabs, but when, up here in Wyoming, we're freeze. So when you reroute it, you got to really think about how am I going to reroute this so it doesn't freeze. So is the attic a problem and a reroute? In a- yeah, we don't do any water lines through an attic because it will freeze here. Yeah. Wow. So when you reroute up and over, what do you, you're going through walls then or? Wall systems, interior walls. I see. Okay. So let's see. What advice would you have, Lance? Somebody, let's say I'm a plumber. I'm just starting out. I Mark's great. I'm an awesome plumber. I'm going to do this myself. My boss, Joe, is a pain in the neck. I'm going to go make my fortune doing my own business. What, what advice do you have? Always focus on your why. Nice. Because I guarantee there's going to be days that kick your butt and you wish you wouldn't have went into business and you're willing to give up 
at that moment because it's so hard. If you're remembering that why I'm doing this, it could be, I want a Ferrari. Hey, it could be, I just want the best business in Southwest Wyoming, or I want this for my family. I want that nice house. I want a lifestyle for my children that they could take over. Remember that why. That's what you're going to have to revert to when those days get hard. I agree completely there. And then there will be those hard days. So your why is your own personal goal. In addition to I'm serving that customer. I want to exponentially grow how many customers, how many lives I can touch in my own lifetime. Nice. What about great resources? What would you say has helped you along the way? What would you suggest to, again, another plumber start now? Read books, e-myth. Yeah, that's a great one. Max out your life, max out your life, the infinite game. There's so many good books out there. Don't forget that you're constantly a student as a business owner. You're constantly learning new things. You have to. Like we were saying, 10 years ago, the internet progressed so much in 10 years. And in another 10 years, it's going to progress even more. People are reading their text messages on their watch now, Mark. Right. Dick, Dick Tracy in my day, that I'm going to a Wayback machine there. Yeah. yeah. Or the phone shoe from Get Smart, right? You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, exactly. That, that was stuff that was just dreamed of back then. And it's actually reality now. And in 10 years, it's going to be completely different. So keep that in mind that as you're growing and you're moving in your business, that you're going to have to adapt. You're going to have to continually learn. And the only way to do that is realize that you don't know everything. And every day I'm going to have to learn something new and adapt to that new technology. I mean, plumbing in the last five years has changed so much. We went from you had no idea when you had a flood in your house to smart valves that actually shut the valve off with your phone. Yeah. And adapt. Learn those new technologies. Learn those new things in your trade. Promote those to your customers. Because what they're going to see is they're going to see a company that's not afraid of technology, that wants to move with technology and build because of the technology. Use that technology to your benefit. We were talking about softeners. Softeners have progressed in so many ways in the last 10 years. We now have a clock head that basically sends a signal through the resin, which is actually what's doing the softening. And it's testing that resin to see how much life it has. Right. How much time is left? Yeah. How much time do I have left before I have to clean myself? And it's doing that every night at two in the morning because it's a smart head. That technology wasn't there 15 years ago. So don't be afraid to learn and grow. Continually be learning, continually be reading. Learn from these business experts. I mean, there's so many men out there that have wrote books, business coaches. I was telling you a little bit about the million dollar plumber and being on his show. Right. I use him as a business coach. The man's a genius when it comes to plumbing. Oh, did you hire him as a business coach? I did. I did hire him as my business coach. Oh, great. Excellent. What's his name? Let's give him a shout out. Richard Bainey. Richard Bainey. If you want to learn more about plumbing and you're in the plumbing trade, reach out to him. He's got a success academy. It teaches you how to learn how to build your pricing, build your price book, how to go through all the steps of marketing, things like that, that really help. And he'll give you bits of advice. And it's all stuff he's learned through his 20 plus years of being in the plumbing field and having his own business. Don't be afraid to learn. That would be my biggest piece of advice to anybody starting business now. Get a coach, but don't be afraid to learn. That's gigantic. Yeah. That was a whole bunch of nuggets in there. I want (laughs) to review a couple of them, if you don't mind. I know we're running short on time here. So the E-Myth Revisited, Michael Gerber, I think. Yeah. So very famous book, really good book. The very first podcast I did was a solo podcast, and I called it Why Your Ego Might Be Killing Your Business. Yeah. And I talked about this book in that podcast. So, yeah, we all believe that nobody can do it as good as I can, right? (laughs) And the worst of us are micromanaging everybody on our team. So guess what? Yeah, nobody is going to care as much as you. And I would debate whether they do it as well as you. There's certain jobs that you're going to do better than others, but there's others. Other people are going to do better, like accounting and bookkeeping and marketing. And there's certain things, your mechanic, that kind of thing. So in the E-Myth, I just want to review for our listeners. So in a simple little book, he goes, I walked into, I think it was a Four Seasons restaurant. I mean, a hotel. Class service. Is the owner at a hotel there? No. They got 382 hotels all around the world or whatever. So it's about systems and culture, which you mentioned earlier. So learn how to get systems and your culture going, and then you'll be able to scale to your heart's content. Right. So that was a really good one. The other thing you said was things are always changing. Technology is changing. Marketing's changing. The digital world's changing. So there's another little tiny book called Who Moved My Cheese? I forget who wrote it. 
PhD psychologist, two mice. They always go to the same spot in the maze and the cheese is always there. And one day it's not. And it's a play on these characters, Hem and Ha, I think their names were. <laughs> and who's willing to go look to where the cheese has moved and who's like, oh, it's not there again today. And they just go back and lay on the couch kind of thing. So your cheese is always moving was the point there. And man, you got to go. It's your job to go find where it moved. And now you're in the digital marketing world, too, if you're any kind of business owner, right? So you would need to outsource that. But even if you do, you still need to know what the heck you're talking about and they're talking about. So tremendous advice there. Thank you for that. Yep, you're welcome. Okay, so let's get to wrapping it up. Let's say, um, well, you did mention, and I forgot already his name. The, Richard Bainey. Yeah, Richard Bainey. The million dollar plumber. Yeah, I would add also um, the home service millionaire from A1 Garage Services. What's his name? Tommy Mello, who has a great podcast, Home Service Millionaire, I believe it's called. Great guests, great knowledge. He's got like a $500 million garage door business. Tells you about going out and buying the neighboring plumbing companies and bringing in your e-myth processes and your service titan. And you're up and running, man, you know, in just a few months. So really good stuff there. So you gave resources. How about, is there any other person you would like to give credit to for your success out there? And there's so many people that have touched me at some point. The one thing I do, Mark, is I network with other plumbing business owners within the United States. Oh, nice. I feel that that is a huge strength because there's things that's going on in Boston that Wyoming hasn't seen yet. Right. And so if I can be ahead of my game, we were talking about changing and adapting, right? If I can be ahead of that curve and I can jump on it before it even is known in Wyoming, you've got the niche. I love that. So what, through Facebook groups and stuff? Or how are you doing? That? Facebook groups, you can find actual devoted groups to the trades out there. Nice. There's uh, service seminars that they do where you can actually network and mingle with others from trades. Awesome. Go to trade shows. Go to your trade show. Join your state and maybe National yep. Plumbers Association or solar, whatever business you're in. Chambers of Commerce. You talked about it earlier. It's a great networking. There's other networking platforms out there that you can go into, network with other tradesmen. Even if they're electricians, you get to learn a little bit about how they're doing their business and you can apply it to your business and make it adapt for you. 100%. Yeah. Networking is huge. I mean, that's a big resource. Is that what opened your door for water softeners, filtration and... What do you call pipe bursting? and The trenchless technology, that definitely has been through networking. Nice. I've never done any of that. That was something that, you know, this is something I'm interested in. I networked with a bunch of people that were doing it. talked to them. I did demos with different companies. Wow, great. And like I was mentioning, we do coding and we use the Picot system. Just getting training from them individually, that's a big part. Reach out to the manufacturers. A lot of times the manufacturers of different companies, say you're in heating and air, you reach out to carrier. A lot of times they have trainings that they'll actually set you up with to teach you about their product. That's a great advice. Reach out to those manufacturers. Those That's networking and getting to know those people and pulling them in. Talk to your warehouse people, people that are purchasing the product for you. Talk to them. Say, hey, do you know how I can get in touch with Viega, for instance, ProPress? That's a big thing right now. We're the only ones in Southwest Wyoming that's doing it. We're on top of it. We're doing all of it. We're doing mega press. We're doing all of it. And it's because we reached out to Viega and had the training on it. But that came from me going, hey, Joe at the warehouse, do you know how do I get in touch with these guys? Do you have a phone number for your manufacturer there? Yeah, this is my supplier. I reached out to the supplier. Hey, how, how do I get in touch with this company? Do the homework. Yeah, go through your Ferguson's, go through your supply houses. Anybody, they're willing to help you and they want you to buy their product. <laughs> so why aren't they going to help you? Yeah, absolutely. And no better training than coming from the manufacturer. This is how you install or fix our product. Yeah, we were talking earlier about me being a Navian rep here. And that's what I did is I reached out to the rep and I said, hey, I want some training. Hey, go down to our school in Irvine, California. Do a three-day school and we'll put you as our NSS, our, you know, our Navian specialist, service specialist. Nice. Well, now I'm on their website. So it builds your business. Yeah, see? And there's another link, too. <laughs> Bingo, there's another link. So now that's building your business and you're building your knowledge at the same time to where you can better service your customer. So reach out to these people, network. To get the help from people, you have to be willing to extend yourself out. And you're impressing your customers yeah. with that, yeah. right? Yeah. Like when you do your first or whatever, your next inline plumbing, pulling a new liner through, mm -hmm. 
and you just save that client whatever, 10 grand in digging up a sewer line, maybe another 20 or 30 grand from not having to demolish their patio or something. If you're going in the street, maybe even more because you have engineering costs. Right. So these are the kind of things that you get the customer loyalty forever. Like they will never leave Aspen Mountain Plumbing ever again. They are yours. You would have to stumble very badly now yeah. to lose that client. Yeah. We spend so much as businesses to acquire customers. And then it's so frequently we leave them behind in the dust. Yeah. So an email marketing newsletter mm-hmm. or like you said, a service agreement, right? A VIP club. Something we do is every customer we get, we send a thank you postcard to them the following week. And it has other lists of services on that postcard that we offer. Yeah, It's something that they can hold on to. It's the thank you. Number one, they're getting thanked for business. Nobody's doing that anymore. Nobody's doing that. Yeah. Nobody's doing that anymore. And that's that personal touch that's going to draw that customer back to you for loyalty. Yeah. And it's not just an email thank you, which some companies do, but it's a old world card. A thank you. Written out, handwritten, the address and name. Yep. Beautiful. Make it personal. Make it personal. Put the personal touch to it. And that's something you can have your CSR do while she's quiet on the phones. Yeah. Instead of surfing Facebook, she can write out some thank you cards. You don't have to do it. Delegate it. But it's still personal. I used to have a uh, e-commerce company uh, many years ago, Lance. And when I started it, I figured, okay, I'm going to be busiest at the night and the weekends, right? When people are off of work. I was 100% wrong. I was busiest when people went to work, which means they were surfing on the internet, the internet and shopping yeah. while at work. So yeah, so they have a lot of time. <laughs> and what's 15 minutes of sitting down and writing 20 postcards or 30 postcards, whatever you got as far as customers, it doesn't take that much if you have them pre-printed and you just go in and sign everything and you just fill it out. It doesn't take much. Oh, yeah. Plus, the CSO now knows that, man, I'm adding this nice personal touch, and we're going to get reviews as a result. We're going to get new business as a result. It's all these little things. Yep. You got quiet time in the trades. You usually have like periods of time where you're busy and periods of time where you're slower. If it's slower, go through your list of people that you went and looked at on a water heater and you left a recommendation. Look at your inspection sheets. If you're requiring it on every job, then you know what they've got as problems and what they don't. And hey, we got some downtime. It's okay to tell people you have downtime. Hey, we got downtime. Would it be okay if we come back and we we look at that water heater and make sure that it's still running good for you? I noticed that on your inspection sheet, there were some issues there. Let us come back and take care of that for you. You would be surprised the amount of people go, you know what? I've got the money for it now. Let's do it. Yeah, it's time for an annual inspection. And again, like an email newsletter uh, that doesn't just sell, by the way, that but says, here's the great things about Rock Spring. Here's our favorite restaurants in Rock Spring. Here's our favorite. Here's our best water damage companies. Maybe something related to you. You can get cross links, right? We do lives on uh, Facebook. We'll do like little things like, is it okay to flush baby wipes down your toilet? And you do demonstrations with jars between toilet paper and baby wipes. So you're educating the customer. But what's that doing? That's promoting you as the expert in that field, right? Yeah. And all your followers are seeing that. And then they might like it and they might share it to their page. And now all of a sudden you got a whole group of new people that you didn't have before. It's just little things like that. It is little. And those things are showing that you're trying to help the consumer. Personal touch. Yep. You're trying to avoid them from having to call you. Yep. So here's money saving tips and advice. And and again, things about the town, which help link you locally as well in Google's eyes and all that stuff as well. All these little things. Community events, anything like that. And you can get that from your chamber of commerce. They usually already know it. Yeah, that is job number one. If for all our listeners, for a multitude of reasons, go join your chamber of commerce if you haven't already. Start networking. Get that valuable link from your local city. If you have multiple locations, go join the chamber. And Every single one of them. Yeah. And you should have a location page on your website for each city that you service. And if it's very competitive, you'll even need like separate service pages and a little cluster for that city, and then any city blog posts, again, favorite restaurants, things like that. So you did mention a few books already, but another book or two maybe you want to recommend out there? Oh, man. I have so many I've read over the years, Mark. Uh, I just finished the, The Max Out Your Life. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that's a good one. 
I have so many of them. <laughs> it's hard to keep track of them all. That's good. No, you, you've you mentioned a few already. E-Myth, I think, is a really big one. It's- That's a good one, especially if you're in the trades. That's a good one for the trades. And the podcast, quite honestly. And by the way, so for those who are not big readers out there, you know that we have this new technology yeah. called Books on Tape. Audio. You know? <laughs> audio. Yeah. Yeah. Been around a little while. You got drive time or whatever to and fro. So uh, plug it in, man, and start learning, right? Yep. Okay. So, you know, if you were in my shoes, and uh, what would you ask yourself that I did not answer? I don't know. That's a tough one. We talked about so much, Mark. Uh, <laughs> You're a great guest, man. You you really poured it out there. So thank you. I'm a talker. And, and that maybe, hey, quiet. Sorry. My dog, my shop dog. <laughs> nice. That's another thing. Bring your pet to work. It's amazing how uh, like interaction you get from customers and people that love their pets, right? Yeah, yeah. I was just on a radio uh, show this morning, a local radio show this morning, and we have a picture of me and my dog on our website. He was like, got to tell me about the dog. <laughs> I saw the picture of the dog and all I cared about was the dog. Be personable. Show yourself as a human, not just as a business owner. And that's really important. I think every business is going to be a little different. Every business whether it's to be a trade or, or any business in general, it's all going to be a little different. You got to find what's going to be best for you and your market. And that comes from you researching it and you doing the work to find it. We were talking about finding niches. That's a huge thing. If you can find something that nobody else is doing, jump on it. I mean, I know a company that they were, they started out doing service plumbing and now all they're doing is softening stuff because nobody else was doing it. And it's an easy money maker. It's something that you can specialize in that a lot of people don't do. We're doing trenchless drain work here because nobody's doing it. There's a lot of things that we've tried to incorporate that nobody else does. And I research it. I have Cleaner Magazine. I have all these different plumbing magazines, p and All these magazines come to the shop. I'm reading them. My guys are reading them. We're on Facebook. We're on the internet. We're checking things out. Stay in touch with your trade. Stay in touch with your community. Know exactly what's out there. Do you want to focus on your competitors? No, but know what your competitors have and what they offer. Right. That's going to give you that leg up. Agreed. Maybe this guy's focusing more on HVAC and that's your opportunity to jump ahead of him. Right. Or maybe this guy's focusing more on plumbing and you need to focus more on the drain cleaning of the plumbing because he's not focusing on it. Look at those different things. Weigh yourself. It's not important to measure yourself to your competitors, but make sure that you're being different. Think outside the box because that different is going to stand out to your customer. Totally. Or maybe one of them is brought in, like you're doing, trench of the sewer repair. And so maybe one of your competitors, if they're smart, they go, wow, Aspen Mountain's doing something new over there. And uh, it certainly helps the customer. Plus, these are nice, high margin jobs, right? Yeah. So I think that was podcast number two for me was like, what are the high margin stuff? Yeah. Yeah. That you really want to try to promote the heck out of and get more of that kind of business. Those water softeners are a beautiful example of that. Plus, man, can you ask for probably, I'm not a plumber, but is there an easier install than a water heater? You find these little things that, I mean... I mean, a water softener, I said heater. A water softener can be two to three hours in a home. It's not that hard of work, but they're high dollar item. So revenue's good, right? I guess every company probably works differently, Mark. The way I work it is less jobs, more income. Right. Right. Exactly. So obviously we were talking ahead of time. I don't do mobile homes. That's why, because a lot of times the mobile homes aren't in that category for that higher markup. Right. I can't put a softener in a mobile home. There's no place to put it. I can't put a tankless in a mobile home. Right. I can't do a sewer for a mobile home. They're renting the property, right? Half the time. So right. that's why I stay away from that. That's not my customer. My customer is the ones that have got this amount and this amount. And those are the ones I want to focus on because they're going to bring me higher revenue in the long run and make me grow faster. 100%. Pick your jobs, pick your customer, pick your neighborhoods. Yep. And stop doing even some of the jobs you no longer want to do. Yep. Whatever they might be. The best way I did that was instituting a service fee. There you go. Okay, right? A lot of people, oh yeah, we'll do free inspections. Us, we got a $49 diagnostic fee. If they're not willing to pay the $49, they're not going to be willing to pay the seven or $800. Exactly. You cut them out right at the very beginning. Yeah, that's how you get rid of the zero revenue service calls. Do I want to help that customer? Yeah, I want to help that customer, but that customer's not going to be able to afford my help. Right, exactly. Yeah, if they're not going to pay the 49 15 whatever it is uh, to roll the truck, then yeah. And chucking the truck down the street that's barely making ends meet, he can 
can have that 49, right? Yeah, there's a market for everybody. So you're exactly right. That is the market for Chuck in the truck. He's starting out. He needs help or the handyman guy. Yeah, that's his business. That's his business. That's not mine. Yeah, exactly. Drain cleaning that leads to hydro jetting or a new sewer line or these high margin jobs. That's where you want to go. Beautiful stuff, Lance. Can't thank you enough. Where can our listeners find you online, Lance? Our website is www.aspenmtnplumbing.com, the abbreviation of mountain. And then we're also on Facebook at Aspen Mountain Plumbing. I mean, if you just Google Rock Springs, Wyoming plumbers, you're going to have us come up on top. Nice. We're Google guaranteed. We keep ourselves high on that status. The reviews help. But yeah, I mean, you can check us out there. If you're in the area, look us up. We're at 1219 Elk Street. That's our shop. Come by, visit. I'll show you around the the shop and show you around things. I have no problem trying to help other people. Sweet. I might come in for a visit myself. Come on by. uh, Selling my house and I'm going to wander the national parks and stuff for the next years. Come on by. We got Grand Teton and Yellowstone not just up from us. I have not been, and Wyoming sounds like a place I need to be. You know, big sky. uh, Well, that's Montana's phrase, uh, (laughs) but you're a big sky country, too. What's your phrase there in Wyoming? I don't mean to do disservice. We're the Cowboy State. The Cowboy State. There you go. So, yeah, looking forward to that, and we'll see you shake hands in person. Definitely, Mark. So I appreciate that. Come on up. So Aspen Mountain, MTN for mountainplumbing.com. Yep. Yeah. Great website. Great resource. Lance, I appreciate it. Great info for our customers. No problem. Thanks, Mark. Big thanks to our listeners for sharing their time with us. Again, thank you, Lance, for sharing your time and expertise. If you like what you heard on the show, please rate, review, subscribe to our podcast so you get notified of future episodes. Feel free to share this episode on your social channels. We'll see you on the next episode. Good luck out there and create a great day. Thanks for listening to the Battle Plan Marketing Podcast. To power up your home service business, for show notes, visit Battle Plan Marketing slash podcast. If you enjoyed our show, please share it on social. Until next time.